just to let you know, we are recording this session. Um, this session is transition to kindergarten. And I'm gonna make some introductions. Um, Marie Darza has been servicing students in Prince George's County Public Schools as a special educator in the early childhood department for 13 years. She's a national board certified teacher in the area of exceptional needs, early childhood to young adult. And she holds a master's degree in special education and is certified in the areas of early childhood, general elementary education, special education, ESOL and admin one. She's currently an itinerant special education teacher and services students with disabilities in pre-K ages three to five who are in their boundary schools and in the community. She believes that every child is capable of learning to his maximum potential and it is our responsibility to help them be the best they can possibly be. She is partnered by Stephanie. Stephanie Howard Wines is a special educator within the Prince George's County. For the past 10 years, she's assisted and assigned preschool programs with instructional support and appropriate recommendations to ensure the maintenance and success of young children with disabilities in their least restrictive environment. Mrs. Howard Wines is trained in CEPHAL, which is Social Emotional Foundations for Early Learners, which is an evidence-based framework that promotes and supports the healthy social emotional development of all children. She holds a bachelor's degree in early childhood education, graduate certificates in special ed and for culturally and linguistically diverse learners, and in educational administrative leadership, as well as master's degrees in special education and a special education for severe disability certification with an emphasis on autism um, dis spectrum disorders. In her spare time, Mrs. Howard Wines enjoys reading and spending time with her two sons, ages five and eight. So Oscar, if you could do me a favor and um, let folks know how to Spanish interpretation if they need to. Hello, I'm the I'm the other interpreter, but hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I just I they sent me the wrong the wrong number, so that's why I was waiting on the other side to, to let me in. Okay, perfect. If you could Do you um, know how many interpreters and, have I'm uh, sorry? Do you know how many interpreters that we should be three interpreters today? We have two. Um, and we're just getting started. So if you could let folks know how to access the interpretation at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Uh, para todos los padres que quieren entrar en la, en la, en la reunión de, hoy, de esta noche, tienen que, eh, tienen que apachar, digamos, el botón abajito de donde tienen toda la explicación está una parte que dice chat, o sea que si quieren hablar pueden apachar ese y si no lo tienen que mantener apagado en silencio. Okay. Is Oscar there? He is. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to start. I think he's having trouble with his audio. So we're going to go ahead and start with you in the interpretation room and then we'll switch off in about 15 minutes. That's fine. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to turn it over to you, Stephanie and Marie. Thank you for um, being so patient as we worked out the interpretation. All right, thank you. Thank Welcome, you. everybody. Thank you. So as Marcy shared, we're here for the transition to kindergarten. Um, as we start our video conferencing, um, just a couple of reminders for etiquette. Um, please make sure that you mute yourself. Um, you are able to mute. This way uh, we can eliminate any background noise. Um, if you go to your screen um, bar, it should either be on the top or the bottom and click the little microphone. If there's a red splash through it, it should show you that you are muted. Um, if you have headphones, please use them. This will help um, ensure that you are able to hear the information. And note that we do have a chat available. We're going to be going through the 
proceed, I'm not procedure, I'm sorry, presentation and taking some time to answer any questions that you have in the chat. But just keep in mind that what you say, both in speaking and writing, can be seen by everyone. Okay, thank you. So what is kindergarten? Um, Prince George's County Public Schools defines kindergarten um, as the basis for the development of the critical academic, intellectual, social, and emotional experiences and learning foundations that will guide and inform students throughout the duration of their school careers. The experiences are planned using the Maryland College and Career Readiness Standards for kindergarten and include reading, writing, mathematics, social studies, science, and health. A typical kindergarten student. Please note, these are environmental signs of a typical child who is entering kindergarten, so beginning um, their first years in kindergarten. What we'd like to see a typical kindergarten student demonstrating is the awareness that written words and symbols mean something. They recognize a few letters in their words. Most of the time, those letters are the letters that are, make up their name because their name defines them. That's the most important to them. They pretend to read and or write. They enjoy having stories read to them. They're becoming more independent, but still need to have limits set for them. They are able to follow two to three step directions, can open their own food and juice containers, are physically strong and coordinated, can communicate with adults and others, as well as use the bathroom independently and can get on and off the bus independently. So we're all here because um, ideally we have a little one who is going to be entering kindergarten in the fall. So myself as a parent of a child who's going into kinder kindergarten, um, I have some concerns. I have some considerations. I mean, these are things that I need to think about. Um, these are things that you probably have thought about. Um, this transition to school is a major life change, not only for our little ones, um, but for us as parents. Um, the transition from preschool to kindergarten in itself is very different. Kindergarten registration, um, that can be very overwhelming. Um, preparing for kindergarten, um, the understanding of recess and lunch and specials, what's the day in the life of kindergarten? Um, a lot of the information um, to these questions we are hoping to answer today, tonight, this evening, and if not, um, at parents' night or open house for your child, um, as the school year continues next year for the, excuse me, the 2021 school year. So as your son or daughter transitions to kindergarten, please know and be assured that there will be support. The collaboration, collaboration with your kindergarten teachers will be present. The collaboration with the receiving schools and programs. Some of your children may be already in a preschool program, whether it's within Prince George's County Public Schools or in a private setting. The students within Prince George's County Public Schools in a pre-K program or at our early childhood center will have a transition meeting with the receiving school. If your child receives an IEP, they will continue to receive their services in their kindergarten placement. All content and prerequisite skills will be provided. Um, we are going to ensure that successful communication behavioral strategies and tools are implemented um, in the kindergarten team, as well as IEP team meetings and parent-teacher conferences. So where will your child go to kindergarten? Schools are identified based on your home address and boundary. Boundaries in schools may include your neighborhood elementary or the school closest to you based on your child's IEP. You must, 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 that's very important, enroll at your boundary school or IEP program. Kindergarten registration. If you have not heard, um, yesterday kindergarten registration opened. Um, due to COVID-19, all registration will be done online. There will be no face-to-face -face registration um, during the school closure. Please visit our PGCPS website for information about um, registration guidelines. You must comply with all of those to ensure that your child is registered for kindergarten. Um, like I mentioned, all the requirements on how to do the online process are currently on the website. Um, registration opened yesterday, June 1st. If your child was accepted into a lottery program, so if your child was in a pre-K that was different than their neighborhood school, 
This is something that may um, apply to you. If your child was accepted into a lottery program, not based on your boundary. Some of these programs include our language immersion schools. We have Spanish immersion schools, French immersion schools. We also have charter schools um, and CMIT, which are STEM-based schools. Please notify your child's elementary school or ECC where they will be going for kindergarten um, so that we may send their records. Please note some of our students that are in general ed pre-K within Prince George's Kind Public Schools did not attend their neighborhood school because they did not offer pre-K at the neighborhood school. So that would look like, for example, if one of your student, if your child attended Baden Elementary, but you're zoned for Brandywine, um, the records from Baden where they attended pre-K would then transition to Brandywine with them automatically. But if we were not, if the school was not notified that you are accepted into one of our language-based programs, you need to notify the school so that we can then send your child's records to that boundary, that new boundary specialty program. Specialty programs within Prince George's County Public Schools. We support students ages five through 21. Some of our students may not be going to their neighborhood school and thus they will be going to a specialty program. Um, please note that these programs allow students access to unique learning systems, will ensure that core subjects are taught, which consist of reading, math, writing, and science. They will also receive community instruction-based outings, as well as ongoing instruction, daily living, socialization, and adaptive and self-help skills throughout their program. So you may ask, who was in a kindergarten class? Students who are five years old by September 1st, 2020, are enrolled in kindergarten. Most of the kindergarten classrooms have one teacher. Additional staff based on elementary school staff and individual IPs may be present, but that is on a school to school, class to class level. Please know that children in the classroom with your son or daughter could come with them from their neighborhood pre-K program within Prince George's County Public Schools. They might also come from an early childhood center also offered in our um, Prince George's County Public Schools. They may come from a community child care center or they may be coming from home and this may be their first school opportunity. A typical kindergarten class within Prince George's County Public Schools has approximately 25 to 30 students with one teacher. Again, as I shared, um, class sizes may vary if it is in a special day program. If your child receives special education services, those services can be either provided to them in a push-in or pull-out model, with the special educator going into the classroom provide those special ed supports, or pulling them out into a smaller classroom to ensure that they're understanding the instruction that is being presented to them. Children with special needs. Children with special needs are blatant are placed in a kindergarten program based on their IEP. Implementation of special education services and related services will occur in those programs based on their current progress of their four-year-old pre-K year, the present levels of performance, goals and objectives, and any types of accommodations and modifications that they may need to be successful in accessing the curriculum. Students with Intensive needs. Some regional schools are located in separate public day school buildings. Um, I'm from the south, southern end of Prince George's County, um, as Marcy mentioned. So some of these schools consist of Avalon Elementary, Rose Valley Elementary, Samuel Chase, Marlton, um, Barney B. Manor, Rosaryville Elementary. Um, the students with intensive needs are medically fragile and require support of a private duty and registered nurses throughout the school day. Um, they require pervasive and extensive supports throughout the school day, and the instruction has to be presented to them in a more concrete manner. Um, students with intensive needs tend to have more difficulty with reasoning ability and safety concerns. Please know that when we are looking at kindergarten, we're looking at the whole child. Um, it's important to think um, not only just about their cognitive ability, their language ability, their social emotional ability, and their physical ability individually, but as a whole, when we are determining if your son or daughter um, needs certain special ed supports. Uh, as we're looking at this whole child, that then will drive where we recommend their kindergarten placement. These are four important components to consider. Um, we consider them prior to making any decisions, 
and we ask that you consider them too as we move forward to kindergarten. So at this time, I'm going to take a five minute break to open up our chat to see if there are any questions that we can answer real quick. It does not look like we have any right now. So I'll just set my timer for a minute to see if anybody has one that they want to add to the chat that we can answer. If not, we will move on. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat. So I will turn it over to my colleague and dear friend Marie um, to continue and we'll touch base um, to see if there's anything, um, comments in the chat afterwards. Marie? Okay, hello again. Um, so what does a kindergarten day look like? Uh, their daily schedule, um, has arrival, then reading English and language arts, followed by lunch and recess, the specials, which would include PE, music, technology, media, library, and art, health, social studies, science, and then dismissal. Now the IEP services are implemented with supports delivered based on the IEP of the child. So arrival, now students are expected to arrive on time daily and attendance is mandatory. Now in case your child is not able to come to school, some schools would, you would be receiving, some schools do this, you would be receiving an automated call um, stating that your student is not in school today. Um, the child will be encouraged or your, your child will be encouraged to be independent. So as they get to school, they're taught to, well, they have to remove their backpacks, button and button their coats, follow morning unpacking routine, give the materials to teacher, to the teacher, like folders, notebooks, um, put their personal materials, materials in the cubby, lunch bags, and give the lunch money to designated to the designated location. And they're to complete morning work and attend to school morning announcements. So in the beginning of the year, the teacher will meet the students at the cafeteria um, just to guide them and welcome them until they are familiar with the school and can walk to the classroom on their own. Um, this is the daily routine under normal circumstances, but based on COVID-19 and we don't really know what the fall would look like, there may be some modifications to classroom schedules and routines. So reading in reading English and language arts. It comprises of um, these activities. We have the whole group instruction, opening routines, um, a mini lesson that would um, enhance comprehension skills, phonemic awareness or and phonics, word work, writing and language mini lesson, and read aloud. Um, now, these are general kindergarten skills that may be back mapped to meet a student's development level. Um, some teachers in the whole group instruction may start with a read aloud that may extend to other activities. And small groups depend on the dynamics of the class until they're familiar with the routine and they can do some tasks um, independently. Usually they start breaking out into small groups by the end of September when the students are more familiar with, 
with the activities. Centers are highly encouraged as these help the students in working independently and small groups are teacher directed. So a balanced reading program is the core reading program for Prince George's County Public Schools. It combines the development of phonological awareness skills with literature rich activities. Um, this consists of phonemic awareness, the ability to hear, identify, and utilize individual sounds in spoken words. So for instance, some activities would be rhyming words, um, beginning sounds, um, phonics, which is the relationship between the letters of written language and the sounds of spoken language, um, fluency, uh, which is the capacity to read text accurately and quickly. Um, so if your child is starting or is good at reading um, sight words, that would be beneficial for him or her. Um, vocabulary, the words students must know to, communi to communicate effectively. So reading to your child often helps improve their vocabulary as it exposes them to new words. And comprehension, which is the ability to understand and gain meaning from what has been said. So answering WH questions, making inferences or predictions. Um, these are signs or um, ways to assess how they're understanding what is taught to them or their comprehension skills. Lunch and recess. So for school lunch, um, application for free and reduced lunches must be submitted and approved before it will be reflected on the student's lunch account. So please remember to submit your applications at the beginning of the year. And for home lunch, please provide children with easy open food containers. They will be encouraged to be independent and learn to ask for help if needed. Um, there is a lunch monitor who will be there to assist them and please have labels on lunch boxes in addition in addition to all other personal items um, remember refrigerators freezers microwaves and ovens and ovens are not available so if you send um, lunch that needs um, refrigeration or needs to be cold please include a cold pack and for recess, students will, ex will exercise daily for 30 to 60 minutes. And please send students in closed toe shoes just for them to be safe. So now we have, we're in math. So math consists of, again, whole group instruction, small group instruction with specially designed instruction and independent activity. So for whole group instruction, we have our math tasks. Um, some of these tasks include um, entry tasks. First, the entry task, um, they assess prior knowledge and introduce the lesson series to develop skills and math concepts. Um, we have the apprentice task, which develops skills using manipulatives, um, hands-on materials, um, making connections to literacy to um, the stories in math in the area of math and modeling what the teacher um, is teaching them and we have the independent activity um, here this is where the teacher does the milestone task now these she prepares the teacher would prepare graded activities to check if the required skills have been achieved and we have independent activity like journals and games Um, math follows the, uh, our curriculum for math follows the Maryland College and Career Ready Standards. So subtopics would include location and position, um, counting to 100 forwards, backwards, and from any number, writing numbers to 20, comparing numbers to 10, greater than, less than, sorting and classifying objects, Recall addition and subtraction facts, five to 10, and solving word problems.
Now, we don't emphasize the use of math work pages. Our curriculum is mostly math tasks that students discuss together to solve. And these skills are, are to be expected at the end of kindergarten. Um, specials. Children may participate in one or more of the following specials. We have music, physical education, and adaptive physical education um, for, our special, for our students with special needs, art, and media center or library. In some cases, children will be taught by a teacher other than their classroom teacher outside of the classroom. So for kids with related service um, providers, uh, they may be pulled out where the related service provider can work with them individually. Health. Um, Health also adheres to Maryland College and Career Ready Standards. It's teacher directed. And they also, we also have independent activities. Um, we talk about some subtopics would be about nutrition and fitness and safety and injury prevention. Um, health is done alternately with social studies and science. For social studies, um, we have teacher-directed and independent activities. Some topics would include political science, where they will be talking about the community, the basic government, what it's like to be a good citizen, uh, peoples of the nations in the world, where they start with the basic unit, family, and then the classroom, community, different countries, different cultures in the community, different cultures in, the, in school. Geography, um, they would be introduced to looking at maps and um, landforms, bodies of water with focus on what we have here in the United States. Uh, geography, oh, economics, uh, goods and services, Talk about needs and wants, jobs at home, jobs in the classroom, and community helpers, giving them that awareness. Uh, and history. So we, they will be comparing communities then and now. And like for the school may have programs like such as Black History Month, Spanish Heritage, or International Day where they will be exposed to different countries with different histories. So the skills that will be enhanced in social studies are their comprehension skills, decision-making skills, critical thinking, and critical thinking skills. For science, um, subtopics would include, or the topics would include earth and space, They'll be talking about the sun and the moon, day and night, seasons and weather, um, life science. They'll be looking at plants, animals, how they grow, life cycle, what they need, um, living and non-living things, and chemistry. Um, they'll talk about matter, solid liquid gas, physics, and, env and environmental science. Um, where they will be um, talking about taking care of the environment. The three R's, reuse, reduce, recycle, and the skills that they will be, um, th that will be developed are comprehension skills, critical thinking, analytical skills, identifying the problem and solutions, and um, science, the curriculum is, has expanded to science, technology, engineering, and math. It's three-dimensional learning where there is a cross-cutting of concepts and skills that encompass all subjects. Classroom technology. So teachers use tools that are appropriate for students, unique teaching style and curricular goals while actively engaging students. So types of technology used in classrooms include 
but are not limited to the following items. Picture symbols, um, tech talk, and flip and talk. And some classrooms may have smart boards, um, Google Chromebooks, iPads. It, it depends on the school and the resources. But for special needs, our special needs um, students, they will have some assistive technology as well that's um, stipulated in their IEPs. Dismissal. Children will be encouraged to independently pack up their backpack and gather materials to go home. Any adult picking up the student must be listed on their emergency card and in the main office. Proper ID will be required and check with your school for specific pickup and drop off procedures. So our kindergarten cur curriculum materials are the following. We have of course, the Maryland College and Career Readiness Standards. Um, for reading and language arts, uh, we have McGraw Hill Wonders. For math, by Pearson, we have Envision Math. Uh, for social studies, again by Pearson, My World, Here We Go. For science fusion, we have Putin Mifflin Harcourt. For health and fitness, we have Harcourt, the core content connectors, and next generation science standards. So we will now be taking a break and checking the chat box for questions that we could address. So uh, Marie, it looks like a couple of people were asking about um, Pacific student concerns. Um, just like your child's IEP is individual to each one of your children, um, their levels of support and services will be unique to um, their daily um, instructional supports. Um, and I saw somebody asked about the presentation link, if it would be available for them to view. Um, I'm told that yes, the presentation link will be posted and sent with a survey tomorrow for you guys to view again, if there's anything, um, that you've missed and have um, want to hear again or look at again. Okay. So Stephanie, this is Lydia. Okay. Hi. Thank Hi. you. Yes, Hi. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I came in. I just got off another um, call, but um, I saw some questions around distance learning for. Yes, I was actually trying to figure out how to answer that. I'm glad you were here. I'm glad I joined. <laughs> um, so uh, as we move into virtual learning, the school system is in the process of determining a recovery plan. Um, part of that re recovery plan may mean, uh, may mean that we will have to do virtual training again which would mean that the students would be responsible to continue to do the content. Um, all kindergarten children had access to um, their teachers, whether through um, a Google Meet classroom, live and or pre-recorded lessons, um, expectations regarding turning in classroom work would still be the same. So many of our teachers, based on what we've already started for virtual learning, if we come back to school and still continue to need that, that would be the expectation of all children to participate um, and to provide documentation or evidence that the children are taking the um, test and also taking, um, providing any documentation that the teacher would want to um, ask for. Okay. okay. Thank you for clarifying that. So I'll just give it another minute to see if that sparks any other questions that we want to add to the chat in case anybody is typing, because I want to make sure that, you know, we are able to answer any of your questions 
to the best of our ability. So I see a question about what will kindergarten look like. So I know later in the presentation, they're going to talk about the kindergarten orientation. So each elementary school would reach out to um, prospective kindergarten students. Um, and in that reaching out for the orientation, I'm sure that they will talk about how to um, access the kindergarten curriculum and teachers based on the virtual or distance learning that possibly will occur or we know will occur in the fall. Okay. All right, so we'll continue. Um, we'll check in with the chat a couple more times as the presentation continues, and then we'll have a question and answer um, section at the end. Um, levels of support. Just as every child is unique, um, we also offer different levels of support um, to them. We have four levels of support in kindergarten classrooms. Intermittent support looks at that the support is not always needed. Um, the child is provided um, support as a quote unquote as needed basis and most likely to be required life transitions. These would include moving from school within the community and work. Limited support is consistent um, is when consistent support is required, though not on a daily basis. It's more of a non-intensive nature. nature. Extensive support looks at regular daily support and is required throughout the entire school day. And then pervasive support, which is daily extensive support, perhaps of a life-sustaining nature, um, is required on multiple environments. Um, just like I mentioned earlier, um, each individual child is different um, and based on their IEP and where they are at functioning will determine their level of support that they will receive throughout their school day. The following are the kindergarten assessments that your son or daughter will in, um, participate in as they go into kindergarten. The reading language, language arts assessments, excuse me, um, will consist of the emergent kindergarten literacy assessment, the DRA, which is also known as the directed reading assessment, the KRA, which is also known as the kindergarten readiness assessment, the unique learning systems assessment, as well as a universal screener. Additional mathematic formative assessment tests will also be implemented, as well as English language learner students will be assessed using the WIDA access for English proficiency to determine if they need additional services um, such as um, ESOL. The kindergarten readiness assessment, as we talked about briefly a minute ago, um, is an assessment um, that looks at school readiness and identifies for parents and teachers where a child is performing developmentally between the ages of 36 and 72 months. It measures a mastery of state learning standards in seven domains. Those, excuse me, those domains um, look at the personal and social development, which is how your daughter or son is getting along with others and handles emotions. The language and literacy domain, which looks at how your son and daughter learns to talk, listen, read and write, as well as he or she expresses him or herself and learning to understand others. Mathematical thinking domain, which looks at using patterns, counting, noticing relationships, and figuring how to solve problems. The scientific, do scientific thinking domain looks at how your son or daughter wonders, how they ask questions, how they find answers and collect information. The social studies domain looks at how people live, work, get along together, and solve problems. The art domain looks at how your son or daughter appreciates and participates in dance, drama, music, and other forms of art. Lastly, the physical development domain looks at your son or daughter's muscle control and coordination, meeting basic needs of food, clothing, shelter, and regular health care.
grading and report cards. Report cards are sent home quarterly, which roughly, excuse me, estimates to about every nine weeks. Interim progress reports are sent home for each child in the middle of each quarter. Your IEP progress reports on your IEP goals are sent home quarterly, as well as in conjunction with a report card. Students will receive a minimum of one grade per week per subject in school math. This is the current grading scale that we are using for kindergarten. Um, they will not receive a letter grade per se. Um, it's more um, a grading scale. So proficient, in progress, emerging, and needs development. The final grades are compromised of classwork, homework, and assessment. All right, before we go into in depth with School Max grading in the family portal, I will take one more second just to touch base with our chat to see if we have any updated comments, questions, or concerns. I'm not seeing any, Marie, but I guess we'll give it a couple of seconds in case somebody wants to type something real quick. Does that work with you? Yes. Okay. Okay, Marie, I see no new questions or comments yet in the chat. Um, if you want to start talking about the School Max and Family Portal. Okay, so School Max, uh, PGCPS uses an online student information system called School Max, which tracks nearly all student data, including contact information, attendance, grades, and discipline. Directions for use and how to access are located on the PGCPS website at the PGCPS homepage. And um, we can click this or I don't. I'm just gonna um, pause real quick, Marie. And yeah. if you look, the link is up there now where you can register your student. It's in the top left of your screen right now. We talked about that at the beginning, right. um, but it's right there for you to click on to register your child for kindergarten. Sorry. No, no problem. So for parents, there is a family portal. Um, if you look down here, I'm sorry, Marie, it's... Right um, where the apple in the book is, it says School Max Family Portal on the website. I just want to make sure everybody knows where it is. You would click on that. And it would be good to check the parent portal on a regular basis so you can access um, their grades and other information. So you type in your username and the password and you log in and information will just scroll down and you can see what what you were looking for in this area and they give and, yes instructions okay. right here um if this is your first time on the family portal how to create your account all right okay Bear with me as I try to get back, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay, now volunteering. Um, getting involved in your child's school is very important and rewarding, and a lot of us would really like to volunteer for activities. Um, we see our kids in action. And so we have guidelines to follow or requirements to be a volunteer. 
And again, I will click on this staff or if you can do it for me, it just shows instructions on becoming a volunteer. So school visitors, so if you have parent-teacher conference or meeting, training conference, um, events or attending events, you'll be escorted under the supervision of PGCPS employee at all times. Just check in with the front office and um, state your business and they will guide you through. And for security process, we use the Raptor system where school visitors must present their government issued ID and it'll be scanned through the Raptor visitor management system upon arrival. You are to wear a badge for the duration of your visit and as well as sign out at the conclusion of your visit. So for one-time volunteers, um, again, you will be a PGCPS employee will, will be with you to guide you. Um, so examples of these would be career day, science fair, um, and other activities um, that make a difference. And again, you'll, you will have to present your ID and wear a badge. For volunteers, like for field trips or not just one-time volunteers, you will undergo a fingerprint check and you have to do this at least 15 business days prior to the activity. You'll also undergo a child protective services clearance. Again, um, 15 business days in advance and complete the required safe school training modules um, each year. So we have here the locations where fingerprinting and background checks can be done. Um, Northern Prince George's County Northwestern High School with, the, with their address, Hughes Barney Investigations, Grand Mission Council, and our very own Sasser Administration Building Background Unit. Um, services and fees for the fingerprinting and child protective services, and this is, I believe, good for one year. It's $62.25, and, 20, um, and that'll allow you to, to volunteer uh, and be cleared for the whole year. And for, um, yeah, the, we have the commercial background check for referees, athletic officials, and independent contractors. Um, to get information, um, there are flyers where when you click on, the, on these hyperlinks, it'll give you information on um, how to go about with fingerprinting and where to go. Okay. Anything else that I missed? Steph? No. Okay. Oh, uh, just to let you know if your child receives free and reduced meals, um, the fingerprint fee is waived if you can show proof of that. Oh, yes. Okay. So, for for students with IEPs who are attending a private or religious school, they must contact the school age child find office. And we have the information below. Services are provided through a service plan to the, to the qualified students. Um, their office is the office of the Department of Special Education, which is at John Carroll Elementary School. And that's their address and phone number. And you can also email Ms. Chandra Fleet with chandra.fleet at pgcps.org. All right, I think we're gonna take a break real quick. Um, I think we have a new comment in our chat. So let me go there to see if we can address it real quick. Okay. Um, before and after care. So my understanding with before and after care, um, it's based on your son or daughter's um, school. Um, PTCPS does not do it themselves. They normally have a partnership with Parks and Rec. 
and some schools offer it for working parents and some schools don't. So based on your neighbor, your address in your neighborhood school, that would be um, one of the things that you could check out on the website um, to see if your school is identified um, as having a before and after care program. Um, I'll give it one more minute to see if anybody else has any questions they'd like to add to the chat to see if we can answer before we talk about how to prepare your child for their transition to kindergarten. All right, I don't see anything, but we'll check again, like I said. So, um, how to prepare your child for kindergarten. Um, talk about school in a positive way. I, I mean, like I, I uh, Marcy mentioned earlier, my youngest is five. He's starting kindergarten in the fall. Um, and, you know, with everything in certain um, times right now, he's got a lot of questions. And, you know, I'm just trying to support him positively. Um, visit the school. Um, please make an appointment in the playground. Um, right now, obviously, schools are closed due to COVID-19. Um, but you can drive by the school and talk to your son and your daughter and talk about how, now that they're going to kindergarten, that's the school that they will be attending. Um, see if they recognize any letters in their school name. Um, when school starts, if your child has an IEP, I definitely make sure that the school principal, the special education chair person, and classroom teacher have a copy of it um, to ensure that they know your child has an IEP and that they're going to ensure um, that the IEP process continues. Um, I encourage you to find books at the library about starting school. Um, tomorrow when you get your survey, um, to let us know how we did tonight. Um, there will be a link to a Google Drive and in one of the documents in that Google Drive will be a hundred books to read before kindergarten. Um, so you can go check them off, um, go to the library. I can upload the link in the chat box later. They have a whole bunch of eBooks online that I encourage you to read with your child um, and talk to them about how to prepare for kindergarten. Get organized, plan for bedtime, morning routines, excuse me, and get supplies. Um, if your child is coming from one of our early childhood centers, they tend to start later. They start around 930. If your child is transitioning to their neighborhood school, check to see what time they open. Some of our elementary schools are starting as early as 755 in the morning, which if your child is used to getting up and... <laughs> at 8 or 8.30 and getting ready for school is going to be a big culture shock um, if the bus is picking them up at 7.30, if not earlier. So again, I check out um, your neighborhood school's website to find out when their school day begins and ends. Um, create a plan with your child for the first day of school. Who's gonna drop them off? Who's gonna say goodbye? Um, make sure that, um, he or your son or daughter know that you will be there when they get off the bus. Talk about bus safety as applicable. Some of our students are walkers. Some of our students ride the bus. Again, that's something that I encourage you to visit the website of your child's neighborhood school. And when you attend um, kindergarten orientation or back to school night, ask about that. Whether or not your neighborhood address uh, places your child in the boundary to walk to school or to ride a bus. If they're riding a bus, um, you know that they will have a reflective vest that they will have to wear every time they get on and off the bus. Talk to your child about making sure that they know how to put on that vest and take that vest off and how to make sure that um, they are able to keep it safe while they are in school, whether it's in their cubby or in their book bag. Attend the systematic kindergarten orientation with your child. A lot of changes are going to be occurring um, with school reopening for the 2020-21 school year and some of those changes we don't know yet. So definitely be on the lookout for that systematic kindergarten orientation day and attend if possible. 
practice opening lunch containers. There will be an adult with your child at lunch, but there will be also be 20 to 25 other students. So try to make sure that those lunch containers are easy for them to open. And talk to your child about their feelings in school. Address their concerns. Um, reassure them that this is going to be a new experience, but it's going to be a fun and learning and exciting experience. And as much as we are eager to get back in the classroom and have your little one with us, um, we hope you feel the same way and that they do too. Here is just a quick suggested book, suggested list of books to read for your child. Um, if you want to take a quick picture or a screenshot, I mean, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, tomorrow's link to the survey, there will be a Google Drive with a much larger list. Um, look out here, kindergarten, here I come. Um, lots of feelings. ABC for you and me, countdown to kindergarten. And then again, here's just another list of resources. Um, resources for you as a parent and as a family. Um, resources for um, your child individually. And then other educational resources, getting um, ready to read, ready at five, um, the Marriage College Career Readiness, the Common Core Standards. So if you wanna take another screenshot or picture of this, or like I said, it'll be in the link tomorrow. And then lastly will be the time now that we will take any questions or concerns. So I'm going to check our chat one time. Okay, yeah, so somebody didn't, thank you um, for answering that question. Some schools offer the before and after care. Um, check with your school. Um, if you give me one second. I will look for that link to get you to the ebooks that are through our wonderful Prince George's County Library. And I will upload it into the chat so that you can have it. Marie, while I'm doing that, can you double check the chat to make sure nobody is asking any questions for us? Sure. No, um, so far there are no questions. Okay. Got it. My game will take back the hour. Okay, I have just uploaded the link in the chat for everybody on how to access ebooks um, through the Prince George's County um, Public Library. Like I said, um, tomorrow there will be a list of 100 books to read to your child before kindergarten, and you can look for those ebooks online. Um, other resources, um, if you could help me, Marie, in that Google Drive consists of two social stories um, that you can review with your chat about going to kindergarten. Yes. And I believe... And, and Sorry. Go ahead, please. Yeah, and one of the social stories is interactive. It's, it's a big file, but it has a lot of activities that you can work with your child, um, including um, activities that may be discussed in their, in, in their different classes, in the different areas like reading and uh, math. Um, it's interactive, it, it's fun, but um, just bear with it. It's a big file. You can save it on your laptop. 
or tablets or or if you have if you want to print it which may be um, a lot of pages and a lot of ink but check it out and there's another social story that's not very long which will kind of um, give them an idea of what kindergarten is like and relieve that anxiety for those who are um, uh, who will be having their first year experience in school. Okay, well, if there's no other additional questions, I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. And I'd like to wish um, you and your future kindergartner well. Um, I know we will all make it a terrific year. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful evening.